Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss the cost of retained earnings. To discuss the cost of retained earnings, we have to go back and revisit the Gordon growth model, which is what? Evaluation approach commonly used to value stocks based on the present value of the expected future dividend, assuming a dividend growth that's indefinitely at a constant rate. And this is the dividend growth model that you or the Gordon growth model that we learned about in the past. Now, if you don't know what this model is, you can go back and revisit it in depth, but I'm going to explain it enough for today so we can keep on going. But if you need to understand this Gordon growth model, go back to my growth model lecture. So here's what we're saying in the growth model or the Gordon growth model to be specific. The price of the stock today, P0, if you want to find the price of the stock, what you do is you take the expected future dividend not the current dividend not d0 you will take d1 and you will divide d1 by r r is the expected rate of return and this is important because we will be focusing on this r today r is the expected rate of return or the required rate of return or what the investors expect to earn from their investment giving the risk for this stock in this industry r is also we are going to call it today the cost of retained earning and we will explain why we call it the cost of retained earning then we subtract the growth rate which is G now when I covered the Gordon growth model I covered this in depth way way much more in depth I will go over those aspects of it a little bit briefly today but I want to make sure you can follow because in order to understand the cost of retained earning you want to understand the Gordon growth model. So what are some key assumptions in the Gordon growth model? This is this is very important to understand. The first assumption is R. R is the required rate of return. Investors require a specific rate of return to compensate for the risk holding the stock. What does that mean? It means when you invest in a company, when you want to buy an investment, you expect a certain rate of return, 5%, 10%. 15%. Now, how do you come up with this expected rate of return? There are many ways and we will see that later. But think about for you, you just you can pull this number out of thin air, you'd say I want to earn 10%. Now, whether that's reasonable or not, that's a different story. But R is expected rate of return. And if the market is efficient, it means the market is fair, efficient, all the information is known, the actual expected return should match this required rate of return. So if the market is efficient and everybody is earning 10%, because that's the ongoing market rate, you would earn 10% assuming you selected the proper investment. This is what we're saying. But the point you want to understand here R is what the investor requires to earn on their investment very important here because we're going to come back and revisit R. this whole session is about this R. the dividend growth this G here how do we compute this it's based on historical growth analyst forecast and other factors so how much do we expect the company to grow and remember we say R is greater than G we always assume that and we explain why and P0 the stock today reflect the stock today obviously it's 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 what's reflected in here is the risk and expected return how the risk is factored into the required rate of return because the higher is the risk the more you would return and on the growth the expected growth of the company the perception of risk is how much you are ex expecting to grow and we have to take into account the dividend that the company will pay therefore the market price is seen as the fair value giving the available information so p0 equal to d1 divided by r minus g now now I'm going to go ahead and focus on R. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So how do we interpret it? How do we interpret R as the cost of retained earnings? One more time, let me ask you this. What is R? 
R is the expected rate of return that the investor expect giving we have a efficient market. So here's what happened. The company generate profit. They have revenues minus expenses. And what do they do? They have net income. What do they do with this net income? They take this net income and they park it into retained earnings. I mean, they keep it. Then part of it could be paid out as dividend. So the company will do what? They can keep the whole thing. They can pay something out and they can keep the rest. So retained earning is what's kept. So when the profit are retained, the company will do what? Why would they retain this profit? The assumption is, here we have to assume, it's reinvested into the operation, expecting to grow future dividend. Now, why would the company don't pay out the dividend? Why would the investor say, you know what? I don't want you to pay the dividend. Why would they say this? The only reason logically they would say this is because they believe the profit kept with the company is being used in a more efficient way than if they took it out. One more time, as an investor, as a shareholder in this company, you would say, don't pay me dividend because if you have other project that's going to create more benefit, I would rather you do that. Let me give you an example. Let's assume you invested in an artificial intelligence company. Let's, I don't know, let's be realistic. Let's assume you, you invested in NVIDIA. NVIDIA is growing. Why? Because of the artificial intelligence uh, growth, NVIDIA will be growing their sales. Now, if NVIDIA has, let's assume, $100 billion or $10 billion or whatever, whatever amount of money in the retained earnings, would you like NVIDIA to distribute this retained earnings to you? Or would you like for NVIDIA to keep the money as an investor? Well, here's what you have to decide. If NVIDIA can take this money and produce more chips and sell it to AI companies and generate more growth and more profit, you are better off keeping that money with NVIDIA rather than NVIDIA distributing this money to you as dividend and you have to figure out an investment that's going to earn you R. That's going to earn you R. So if you believe the company can generate more than what, more than what you can, then you let it go. You, 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 keep the, you keep the money there. But this is the cost of retained earning. The cost of retained earning means you are foregoing the retained earnings, but you assume the company is going to do better. I, okay, so how does it work? Investors want to make sure the return, the cost of retained, the cost of keeping retained earning, keeping the money within the company at least matches what they earn elsewhere at a similar level. So if you want to earn 10%, and the company and NVIDIA can earn 15%, you keep it. You would forego the 10%. You would let them earn the 15% because your rate of return is only 10%. So if, if profit are distributed as dividend, what would you do? Investors immediately receive return, but also lose potential growth. So what does that mean? It means shareholders might then reinvest those dividend and other investments seeking better return. They may or they may or may not get that better return. But if you keep the if you keep the money with Nvidia and they can earn that or can earn more, then you are better off keeping it. So the cost of retained earning reflect an opportunity cost. What's that? The return investors forego because profit as re, are retained within the company rather than distributed. So you want to forego this dividend because you believe the company could earn better. In other words, the dividend growth model clarify this decision by quantifying the return investors require. So what does that mean? So if they, if they retain, if the internal return is greater, you would keep the money. You tell them, keep it. Because internally, you can generate more return than what I require. Let's assume I require 10% and they can get 15%. They can get the internal return is 15% because the company is growing and I'm okay with 10. What I would keep it, I would keep it. If the internal rate of return is less than the investor's required rate of return. If you require 10 and they only have project that would only return 7%, you would tell them, give me the money and I will invest the money somewhere else. So we have to determine this R to see what's this opportunity cost, the cost of retained earnings. Again, R is the same thing as the required rate of return. So let's... Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Cedar Scorp common stock currently sells for $40. The company recently paid a dividend of $3 per share and expect dividend to grow at 6% annually. 
what is the cost of retained earnings based on the Gordon growth model? Same thing, they're asking you, what is the R in the formula? What's the required rate of return? Well, what's the formula? The formula is you will take R equal to D1 divided by P0 plus G. Now, this is the R formula. Now, remember, we don't have D1, we have D0. So the first thing we have to do is find D1. D1 equal to D0, which is $3 times 1.06 the growth rate equal to d1 equal to three dollars and 18 cent now we'll take three dollars and 18 cent divided by the current price which is 40 dollars plus we get to the growth rate of the growth rate is 0 0.06 and if we complete this computation we will get to 13 0.95%. Therefore, the cost of retained earnings is 13.95. So what does that mean? It means the company, uh, the required rate of return is 13.95. The investor want to earn 13.95. If the company can earn more, they should keep it. They should forego this 13.95. Why? Because that's the required rate of return, but the company can do better. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, multiple choice, lectures, any other resources that will help you, whether you are a student, CPA, CMA, CFA, or any other professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.